Today we're exploring negative numbers, so feel free to pause the video here and read through your success criteria. More importantly, or most importantly rather, sorry, um, we're looking at counting back through zero and what happens when our numbers become negative and, and comparing numbers that are greater or less um, that are negative. So have a look at the sequence here. We had some, look, or some work on sequencing in the previous video, so feel free to look through those for a bit of a refresher if you need it. Write the next three terms. So you can identify what the rule is by looking at the difference between the first term and the second term. 45 to 35, okay. Well, if we think about what the difference might be there, we think that it could be subtracting 10. So we can apply that to the next one and see if that's correct. 35 to 25, subtract 10 again, that's right. So the rule is to subtract 10, which will then in turn help us to write the next three terms. So the next three terms need to be 15, subtract 10 there, will be five. And then when we subtract five, or sorry, subtract 10 from five, we end up with negative five, okay? And the best way to think about that is maybe a thermometer. So you have kind of a number line, it's, it's vertical like that, but you might have zero in the middle, so zero can go there. And then up here you might have five, move that over. And then you might have negative five at the bottom because we're going below zero. So that's kind of how you can envision negative numbers if that works for you. Um, you can do it horizontally as well. It doesn't matter if your number line is vertical or horizontal, but the idea is that you have your number line and you have your numbers below zero, okay? The closer you are to zero, the greater the number is, okay? So the way I think of it is the number's warmer, okay, if that helps. Oh, and when we count back through zero, the numbers become negative. So they have the negative symbol in front of them. We don't say minus five because we're not taking five away. So it's negative five. Here we have some representations for negative numbers and we're trying to compare and see what's the same and what's different. Yes, they all are versions of number lines in a way. This one's using bars and this goes from zero, or sorry, from negative four over here, the cold temperatures, if you think of it that way for the blue, to positive four. This one's going from negative five to positive five. And this one's going from negative 10, and they're upside down like the bars here, up to positive 10, which are right side up like these red bars here. We can pause here and try these ones out. Um, ideally, we're thinking about marking and labeling the numbers on a number line. So we need to think about where we'd place these numbers on this number line that we see here. So negative 7, if we know that 0 is in the middle and we're going back, into our negative numbers, we would just have to go seven ticks to where negative seven would be. So that would be this tick here. Okay. This would be five, so negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, okay? And then we would find positive one somewhere over here. We would just write one. If you don't have the word negative in front of a number, you assume it's positive, okay? And so on and so forth. You can pause and try to fill in your own version of that number line. Let's compare these numbers, okay? So greater than, less than, or equal to. So if we have, let's say, negative seven and negative one. Negative seven is further away from zero. It's also a negative number, so it is automatically going to be less than positive one. Zero is greater than negative five because of the virtue that, well, it's zero. And if negative numbers are automatically less than positive numbers, okay? Negative five is actually greater than negative seven and that's because it's closer to zero. It's over here. And negative seven, by that same virtue, is less than negative five, okay? Um, there are some other ones over here that I forgot to write out, but that's okay. You can feel free to have a go with those, okay? Here are the fluency questions for today. Have a look at those. And here you'll find the reasoning and problem solving. Best of luck.